afternoon, everybody. I have to forewarn you, the talk is going to be a little short, but there are some things um, that, that um, need my attention today, certainly. So let's go, let's jump right into it. There's some things going on right now, you all. I certainly do. Is everybody sober right now? Is everybody sober? Everybody ready to uh, hear an update? U.S. relations with Russia seem to be getting frostier by the day, and in an unprecedented move, the Russian military says it now plans to send strategic bombers on regular patrol in America's backyard. What's happening in the world is, 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 uh, is everybody, do you have your coffee? Are you ready to go? The reason why I say that, multiple reasons actually, but we're going to talk about Persia and Russia, the Islamic rev- revolution that's uh, taking place. It's, something is beginning, and we're, we're going to have to pay attention to it. What? <laughs> to, uh, what's that place called? Um, Albania, down to Greece. We're looking at a change in a demographic concerning the Middle East, and it's, it's going to become quite serious. I'm going to let you guys know the role of the USA in this, and um, I'm going to be as gentle as I can, as gentle as I can. We, wh- here's, what we, here's what's happening, folks. I know that the USA is in the middle of an election year. Right, but the world is certainly looking at this election, and I, even though it does not seem real, right? It doesn't seem real. The election is more like a—I don't know what it is, but it is—it's uh, it's somewhat ridiculous. There are some things that are, some things are clearly set up. All right, they're set up this way. Uh, people have been picked and chosen to do what they do for specific reasons, but it seems like a big show. Right, which which really alerts me in my spirit that we have to be, we have to be on our toes. You know, there are dates that I do have. There are dates that I have. I don't mind sharing those dates with you. So you might want to break out a notebook. All right, but you have to be sober even with these dates. Okay, you have to be sober. Now you all have heard me say that 2017 is a target date. To the extent of that year, you have no idea. It's not a joke. It's not something for, you, you know, it's not for popularity, certainly. Most of the things that I say make me unpopular. Go figure. So, before I get started, I'm going to ask each and every one of you to remain sober. Understand that your time here is very limited. That's a pretty bold statement, but you don't have that much time left. You may think you have time, but you don't. You're at the door of something according to scripture and prophecy. What you guys are seeing in the news, what you all are observing. I know it can be very confusing, but understand the final and ultimate goal here. The ultimate goal is to have a system in place in a very different way than what it is right now. The kingdom of the beast is functional because everything is bowing down before it. So what is the goal? That all kingdoms bow down in everything to the beast system of which There will be a ruler appointed who will rule everything, but he's going to rule it in freedom. He's going to rule it through peace. It will be a utopia. It's not going to be a harsh kingdom like you think. It'll be a utopia. A highly advanced kingdom. Highly advanced. Now we all know, according to the word of God, that kingdom is going to be thrown into darkness. You see, sometimes when we say the kingdom of the beast... We look at something horrific and horrible. No, it's not the way it's going to be. Through peace, he shall destroy many. He will be appointed to the kingdom by flatteries. He will not have the honor of the kingdom. But 
but through peace, he'll destroy many. Ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you that our grand scale plans for 2020 will be delivered. When you know that peace is compromise, in other words, to lay down certain things for the sake of peace, for the sake of a combined nation, all right? Through peace, it's going to happen, a utopia, a beautiful, beautiful kingdom. That's the first thing you need to, how many people looked at the beast system and you said, wow, that's going to be an ugly, ugly system. No, it's a beautiful system. Beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful system. Didn't we learn anything from history? Those who were involved with Hitler, right, seeing it from the outside, they saw it as beautiful, a beautiful system, beautiful system. But today I'm going to share the truth with you because you've heard too much propaganda. How many of you think that Russia is this backwards place of which the people are harsh and everything else? No, I'm not a communist. I'm telling you the truth. But how many people think that? How many people look at a map and you think that the continent sizes are actually what they are? How many of you do that? Has anybody been in high altitude who have seen the earth? And it's true perspective, right? Have you ever done that? Have you ever been in uh, 65,000 feet or higher? You really get a beautiful view of the earth, right? But you notice something, that something is wrong with the maps. You look at the maps and you say, wait a minute, this does not match what I'm seeing. Because the sizes are all wrong. They're all wrong. They're just wrong. You look at the truth, you look at the United States, it's much smaller than what it actually is. You look at the southern regions, they're much larger than what they are. And so the maps are representing the continents out of proportion. They really are. That's, that's just one element of what's being used in the control system, right? Because they have psychologically duped you already. So that you will interpret different countries differently. You won't see them as a threat or because they represent something minuscule you don't think about that at all every important state in the United States is not mentioned on the Weather Channel too much so the least mentioned states are the important ones you have the internet you could find that out yourself you say wow every state they don't discuss over and over again are the important ones look at what is there unbelievable Unbelievable. Most people think that the power consolidation is in Washington, D.C. False. That's false. That is false. Washington, D.C. began one way, but now you could say that's just for public consumption. You think that all the important decisions in the power base is in Washington, D.C. It is not. It's not Washington, D.C. That changed a long time ago. Now you see how duped people are? You have the Internet. It's very easy to see the power structure. It really is, right? But you can't look up these public figures. You have to look up the true employees of the government, right? The civil servants who have a job year in and day in and day out, they, they're not elected officials. That's why a president of the United States cannot do anything he or she wants to do. They are a mouthpiece. A lot's happened over the years and while this nation has been tested by war and it's been tested by recession and all manner of challenges I stand before you again tonight after almost two terms as your president to tell you I am more optimistic about the future of America than ever before that's all they are mouthpiece they can't do it Russia throws its propaganda against the U.S. So in Russia, people look at the U.S. as this communist nation, honestly. A prison nation. That's how they look at the U.S. Now Russia has decided to take a side with the Islamic world against the United States and Europe. It did sad that all we have is Europe, ladies and gentlemen. You think that the U.S. is going to do something horrific to its people? I can tell you that the U.S. is going to fight for what's coming up.
I can tell you that because the people want to fight. The U.S. is going to fight something, which is going to force most of your elitists away. I can also tell you that the U.S. is going to be under attack. From who? From what is called the Russia Islamic Revolution. Anybody ever heard that term before? That is the new Russia. That's the new Russia. The Russia Islamic Revolution is happening right before your eyes. It's wordplay. Right? They don't call it that. You have to make that connection yourself. They don't call it that in public. There is a name for it officially. Who is Russia working with right now? The Islamic people, right? Who are they propping up in your view? You see them propping up Syria, Assad, correct? The U.S. and Europe says Assad's got to go, correct? Russia says nobody's going to touch Assad because they're going to have to fight us if they do so. In fact, they said if anybody attempts to assassinate Assad or come and take him, that would be, that would be within an hour, that would be the trigger to a world war. It, Vladimir Putin has a very different objective in Syria than does the rest of the world. They want to uphold Bashar al-Assad. Their worry, uh, and I'm not a total Russia expert, but I've studied this issue and I've spoken to people about it. Their main worry is that if Bashar al-Assad were to go, there would be no more Syrian regime. There would be a collection of uh, Alawite warlords, that's the, the sect of Bashar al-Assad, uh, fighting amongst each other, uh, going up against a collection of Sunni warlords going up against each other, and it would be total chaos. Thus, NATO forces have recombined their strength, right? And, and certainly in Germany, parts of the Ukraine, Italy, France, Poland, right? All these places are preparing both their navies, their air forces, and their ground forces. Now, Navy and Air Force, I can see that. Why would they prepare ground forces? It's because Iran is planning an invasion of Italy, the Ukraine, parts of Greece, if Greece does not make a decision, so they can take over Turkey. You see, Iran wants Turkey. Russia is an ally of Iran. All right? Pakistan and Afghanistan will go along with Iran. You guys got that? Even uh, uh, Uzbekistan and, and, and Kazakhstan is in support of Iran. India says they will try to stay out, but if an Islamic war began, they'll take the same stance as Pakistan. In other words, they're going to have to fight with those who will gain control over the world. So what do we see here? We see, certainly, we're, we're sitting at the dawn of a war. The pieces are being positioned. There will be missile launches in the weeks and months ahead. I'll say it again, there will be missile launches. There are going to be missile launches. For one, it's too crowded. For two, policy is broken down. We're supposed to have a ceasefire beginning here in a few hours. Yet Turkey and, and, and Saudi Arabia are buffeting one another right now. Egypt, Egypt is on the edge of something because they're, they're feeling pressure from the forces that are in Libya. There are forces... Islamic forces in Libya that are about to, to cause something in Egypt. Now, Egypt also is surrounded by Libya, Chad, Sudan, and, and parts of Ethiopia. Saudi Arabia, there are certain to the, to the west, uh, western Saudi Arabia, are, are, there are zones there that nobody wants to go into. Okay? So what we see is a true surrounding of not only Israel, but of also Egypt. You could say this. You could say Egypt and, and Israel stand alone because ISIS forces, Islamic forces, truly do surround them, all the way to Turkey, right? And then we have Russian warships going in and out or, or near that, that are our places where our warships are in the Mediterranean. So there are many things happening. God warned us in his prophecies that when we saw Jerusalem surrounded by her enemies, to look up for your redemption, draweth nigh. He said, when you see them surrounded by their enemies, look up for your redemption, draweth nigh. Look up, look up, look up. That's what he said, look up. Now the U.S. being in support of Israel, we have uh, Arleigh Burke class destroyers in that province, in that region, 
which has caused Russia not to bring down certain ships they wanted to bring. They wanted a, an, an entire uh, they wanted an entire flotilla with resupply ships all over the place, but the U.S. put a stop to it. Tensions are rising there, too. I bet you the Admiral right now has a headache, a bad one, because there is no talking to Putin. No talking to Putin. He's not going to discuss. You know what? Haven't you guys noticed the attitude of Putin? He'll let them talk, and while they're talking, he's doing things. Now, he has set up massive forces in Syria. Massive forces. The only element in his way is Turkey. Turkey can easily be consumed. He only threatened to use tactical nukes because there are nuclear weapons in Turkey. And he knows where to hit Turkey with tac nukes, okay? He knows where to hit them to, to, to totally deplete Turkey's ability to respond to further threats. He also has a very advanced missile system. So if Turkey tried to launch anything, they would essentially mess their own country up. All right? And the winds play a great factor in that. There are also biological weapons in the Middle East. Now, folks, we're discussing something real, not some show, not some interesting uh, uh, war movie. This is in real life. Russia, in 2013, installed aerial systems, early warning systems that cover IRA, and, the, and we were mad at that. Let me tell you what happened with it. The, they cover the entire region, by the way. They, can, they cover their radar systems, cover the entire, the entire country of Iran. It covers Iraq. It covers Syria all the way down into Egypt. It covers all of Turkey, all the way over into the Ukraine and parts of Germany. These are early warning systems. They installed them in a hurry in 2013 after they were told not to do it. You see, there were negotiations, and the U.S. lost airspace over there which is also why we were forced out of certain Syrian airspaces there were tight lines Russia expanded their aero coverage of Syria and just pushed us out of the way now your president Obama and his staff is not all him as everybody that's working with him look I know you really want Crimea okay but I got some advice for you okay just let it go let go let it go they they decided to back off they did they decided to back off vlad vlad just just to recap our call no progress was made here right none at all okay take care bye 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 but let me tell you something about a u.s president and and likely why they're having an emergency meeting the bilderberg group and everything else because they deal with the money factor and they're going to capitalize off the inevitable but let me tell you something about the US president versus other presidents in other countries we truly do have democracy in this country the other countries do not that means whoever's a president in the Middle East they can do whatever they want to do they can go against their cabinet advisors and everything else and whatever they say is law because when you're president in the Middle East you have to watch everybody everybody's afraid of everybody and they do that on purpose because someone would easily assassinate a president in the Middle East. And so there are spies in the government over there, which means a president in the Middle East is more like a king. Like a king. All right? In America, it does not operate that way. The president cannot do everything he wants to do. Because, in a sense, they're mouthpieces. The real rulers in America are the civil servants who spent 30, 40 years in their specific uh, jobs who are doing a job day in and day out and they get the president and other mouthpieces to present it to the people so that the people can be informed in a certain way that they will go along with what has already been ruled on the air defense systems in the US they're gonna they're gonna try to do this silently but they can't occupation stand up philosopher what stand up philosopher I coalesce the vapor of human experience into a viable and logical comprehension. Oh, a bullshit artist. Right? The East Coast, the boats are going to go missing. Because they're going to pull them off the East Coast. Let me, let me tell you something. You ever, if you ever see ships being pulled out of port, well, then you really better sit up. You better sit up. That, that, that implies a target area. It's what that implies, a target area. 
don't look at the excuses. Well, we need to pull the ships out because the drain is clogged. That's what they might as well be saying. They start pulling ships out. You better watch out. When air traffic dwindles, then you know something is happening. Right? Because during the defense net operations, air traffic is minimal. Only mission, uh, U.S. mission essential flights will take place. Mission essential personnel. The corporations right now are preparing like you wouldn't believe. While everybody else is complaining about this and that, corporations and the rich people are preparing. Preparing. Let me tell you how much they have prepared. They have built a facility. Listen to me close. And they have left hieroglyphics on it to explain to them the society that exists today. They made it out of granite because it will survive the hot temperatures that are coming upon this world. Because they know that half the, most of the population is not going to make it through this transition. They're not going to make it through. War will establish a new paradigm, a new order of government, period. That's what that's going to establish. It is as simple as that. This war coming up is going to establish the subduing of personnel that they need to establish this new kingdom. You see, if, if things were destroyed, right, and there was a government that was left, you know what people are going to do? It didn't matter what government it is. Whatever government emerges from this mess. They, in the guise of peace, they're simply going to begin to service the people. And the people will go along with whatever is said. Most people think it's going to be some kind of violent takeover. Right? They're going to come door to door and start shooting people in the head and this, that, and the other. Oh no, that's not, that's not even what the scripture says. Through peace... He shall destroy many. It also said something else. They that feed of a portion of his meat shall destroy him. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? The same people who listen to this guy, who have been, who have been ingesting his words, who are practicing his teachings, who have beheld his miracle working hand, the same people who feed of a portion of his meat shall kill him. Do you know why? Because when the kingdom of the beast is thrown into darkness, everybody realizes, oh, we messed up. When the bottomless pit is opened and locusts come out upon the earth, not a specific area of the earth, ladies and gentlemen, those locusts, they're nothing more than demonic entities. It was also spoken of in Psalms. That same bottomless pit is in the Psalms. Did you know that? Why is it in the Psalms? The Lord is telling us the truth, but we've got to wake up. You've got to wake up. And I told you before, I warned everybody, I told everybody last year, 2015, you're going to behold horrific things in the Middle East that are beyond belief. And you're going to see that from the comfort of your own homes. I also warned, do not become a part of the violence. Don't become part of the violence that you'll see in this world. Don't allow yourself to be plucked out. Don't allow yourself to be drawn into things you shouldn't be in. This year, from this moment on, some of you need to learn how to say no. Your niceness, your, your passiveness has gotten you into problems and trouble. You can't afford to be passive but truthful. Do you not know that being passive, you can compromise the truth? Do you not know that? You compromise truth for the sake of being passive. That's worse than compromising the truth for a lie. I also request it of you all to remember you don't have to add yourself in a game and choose a side. You don't have to you don't have to have somebody present a side to you and you have to take it. You're on the Lord's side. You be on the Lord's side. You stand with him, he'll stand with you. Okay? You stand for the world. You stand for this perpetual vomit in the world. And you're going to find yourself outside of the very place you yearn to be. Sooner than you think you're going to be with the Father. Giving answer to what you've done in this earth. Sooner than you think.
Our Father has a solution to us. But if you don't believe that your Lord and Savior has a solution to you, for you, if you, if you find it difficult to believe that he actually stands for you, you know, my heart is breaking for you already. It really is. It really is. today certainly so let's go let's jump right into it there's some things going on right now you all i certainly do is everybody sober right now is everybody sober everybody ready to uh hear an update u.s relations with russia seem to be getting frostier by the day and in an unprecedented move the russian military says it now plans to send strategic bombers on regular patrol in america's backyard what's happening in the world is is, is, uh, is everybody do you have your coffee? Are you ready to go? And the reason why I say that, multiple reasons actually, but we're going to talk about Persia and Russia, the Islamic rev- revolution that's uh, taking place. It's Something is beginning, and we're, we're going to have to pay attention to it. to, uh, what's that place called? Um, Albania, down to Greece. We're looking at a change in a demographic concerning the Middle East, and it's, it's going to become quite serious. I'm going to let you guys know the role of the USA in this, and um, I'm going to be as gentle as I can, as gentle as I can. We, wh- here's, what we, here's what's happening, folks. I know that the USA is in the middle of an election year. Right, but the world is certainly looking at this election, and I, even though it does not seem real, right? It doesn't seem real. The election is more like a—I don't know what it is, but it is—it's uh, is somewhat ridiculous. There are some things that are, some things are clearly set up. All right, they're set up this way. Uh, people have been picked and chosen to do what they do for specific reasons, but it seems like a big show. Right, which which really alerts me in my spirit that we have to be, we have to be on our toes. You know, there are dates that I do have. There are dates that I have. I don't mind sharing those dates with you. So you might want to break out a notebook. All right, but you have to be sober, even with these dates. Okay, you have to be sober. Now you all have heard me say that 2017 is a target date. To the extent of that year, you have no idea. It's not a joke. It's not something for, you, you know, it's not for popularity, certainly. Most of the things that I say make me unpopular. Go figure. So, before I get started, I'm going to ask each and every one of you to remain sober. Understand that your time here is very limited. That's a pretty bold statement, but you don't have that much time left. <laughs> 